When I heard Dave Ramsey's total money makeover, it was like this. A fire lit right under my butt. Oh, that book had me. That book me ha <laughs> that book had me running toward my debt. I had to get out of it as fast as possible. But I did acquire one little secret up my sleeve so that I would never go over budget again. And I'm going to share that with you today. I try, you guys, I try. Today we're talking about the budget buffer, right Buns? My budget buffer serves as a catch-all in case I were to go over budget. It also serves as a midway emergency fund and it also serves as an ever-present sinking fund for whatever is needed whenever. Many of you have asked me before, do you have a sinking fund, Kate, or do you have sinking funds? And the answer is no, but kind of, because I have a budget buffer. Some people call a budget buffer cushion or runway. It's a little room for error, gives you a little margin in your life and your finances. And I don't think people talk about this enough. The budget buffer is not an emergency fund, although in my case, it sort of started out that way. This is what I did. When I heard the total money makeover by Dave Ramsey, I was like, wow, wow, wow. This was so motivating. This was so encouraging. I've got to do this, but you know me, I've got to do things sort of my own way. So this was what I did. I had already saved up a thousand dollars before I learned of the baby steps. So I kind of had already crushed step one without knowing it. Step two is to pay off all of your debts except your home. And that was the step that I was on because I was trying to pay off my car. And if you guys remember, I was trying to pay off $20,000, but I didn't want to go broke doing that. So I needed to also save up my budget buffer so that I was comfortable. I had foolishly leased a car and I was trying to pay it off when the time came to either renew or pay it off. I did not want to have that on my shoulders anymore. So I was aggressively saving and I have two videos on that. I will leave those also in the description if you want to check those out later on how I did that. Since I was in progress of trying to pay off that car, I personally was not comfortable paying off a big lump sum and not having some backup. So what I did was I built in a budget buffer in between. I saved up $10,000 that kept me between disaster and being okay. So my plan back then was to save $20,000 beyond the $10,000. I had $10,000 that I wasn't touching. So it was kind of like an emergency fund, but it was flexible. It was a flexible fund, if you will. So I scrimped and I saved and I squirreled and I paid off the $20,000, but keeping that $10,000 there. So then what I did was I made sure I had three months expenses in my checking. And by the way, that is where that $10,000 sat at the time. And that was the budget buffer. It was between me and disaster. And then off of that, I built a separate three months expenses for savings specifically for my emergency fund. This might be a little backwards in some people's minds, but this is what worked for me. So I had three months in my checking that could be used if needed, but hopefully not touching. And guys, I mean, I'm not one of those people that's gonna blow it and spend spontaneously. I'm just, it's not my style. So no, did I worry about it being in my checking and I was gonna spend it? No but I put three months in savings. And then what I kept doing was building upon that to eventually, if you guys have been following me, you know I have a 12 month emergency fund. The budget buffer to me is key in regards to not going over budget, having a cushion and dealing with the unexpected that is not your emergency fund that is only to be used when it goes down hard, like lose a job, serious medical situations. The budget buffer is a little bit lighter. It's a little bit, like I said, more flexible. For example, when would I use my budget buffer? I just used it, in fact, this month. When my cat had an unexpected 
vet visit, the cost came out to $330. Where did I pull from? The budget buffer. That is where the buffer comes in. It's the perfect example of when it comes in. It wasn't expected. I don't need to pull from my emergency fund because I've got that cushion there. Like an ever-present sinking fund, it's there for all purpose, an all-purpose fund, <laughs> if you will, that is encapsulated by the term the budget buffer. So for me, the budget buffer sits comfortably in my checking account. Most of the time, I don't go over budget. But if you guys would recall, there was one time when I first started making house payments that I didn't know if my auto pay had kicked in or not. And for whatever reason, I didn't think I was there yet. So I just made the payment. And then the auto pay came out also because I had set up auto pay because I am a planner and I had pre-planned, but I was a little too planned. So I ended up making two house payments. But did I sweat it? Honestly, no, because I had the budget buffer. So it wasn't as freaky as it might sound. If you didn't have a budget buffer and two house payments came out, oh my gosh, in the past I would have panicked. But in this case, because I had the budget buffer, budget buffer to the rescue. No need to panic, stay calm, budget on. Would I use my emergency fund for a vacation? No. Would I use my budget buffer for a vacation? Yes. Would I spend money out of my emergency fund for a blown tire? I could, but I would go to the budget buffer first. Would I use money for Christmas from the emergency fund? No, no way, absolutely not. Could I use money for Christmas from my budget buffer? Ding, ding, ding. Yes, indeed, I could. More than likely, that will just be in my regular budget. But should I need it? The budget buffer is there to save. The budget buffer is there to buff for whatever is needed. Where do I store my budget buffer? In my checking account. Where do I store my emergency fund? In my savings. Now, some people have a specific separate emergency fund savings. You can absolutely do that especially if you're a person that is afraid they're gonna touch it if it's too available, then you can put it somewhere else, make it harder to get to if you need to. You can set up a bunch of obstacles if you want to stay away from it. Me personally, it's just, I know I'm not gonna touch it. I know that's what it's there for and I'm not touching it, so I don't even think about it. I pretend it's not there. Regarding the other baby steps, just in case you're curious about how I do things, Baby step four is investing 15% in retirement, which again is something that I had started before I learned about the Dave Ramsey baby steps and I did not halt that, I just kept going. So I was still putting that aside while I was doing all these other things. Again, Dave Ramsey would disagree, but it's just the way it worked out for me. I kept it in there because I also started late in the game when it came to retirement and I had to play catch up. Baby step five is to save for your kids' college funds. If you haven't seen my video on my thoughts on that, I will leave it right here and down in the description below so you know that I'm really not focused on number five and the video will explain all the reasons why. So I'm currently on baby step number six, which is to pay off my house early. And yes, it's gonna take me a while. If you want an update, on how far I've gotten with that, let me know in the comments. Do you wanna know a house payoff update? I don't give specific numbers, but if you're looking for maybe how many years I've shaved off since I've started paying my payments, let me know. I could probably put that together for you. Okay, so now you're probably thinking, I kinda of want a budget buffer if you don't have one already. Here are some quick tips on things you can do to start building your budget buffer right away. Number one is take the remainders of any line items in your budget that you go under on for any reason. For example, you set aside $100 for gas, you only spent 75, take 25, boom, into the budget buffer. Second quick tip for building your budget buffer. Swap out a less expensive form of entertainment. Say you were gonna go to the movies and get popcorn and candy and the whole deal, can you find something else that you could do that would cost less and take the money you would have spent on that form of entertainment and put it in your buffer? Number three quick tip is have a no spend weekend. 
A lot of you participated in No Spend January with me this year, which we will be doing again next year, and had some great successes. But sometimes we can't do a whole No Spend month, especially smack in the middle of whatever season you're in. It might not be feasible. So challenge yourself to a No Spend weekend and take the money you would have spent there, boom, into your budget buffer, baby. Number four quick tip is let go of one thing. Say you love Coca-Cola and you drink a ton of Coca-Cola. You know it's not that great for you, but you know, you keep buying it anyway. Can you let go of Coca-Cola for a little while and take that money and put it in your budget buffer? Is there another thing that you're doing? Are you eating something that is really not good for you? Are you binging on designer bags? Like, what's your thing? Is there something that you actually know that's not even that good for you that you keep spending on, that you could let go at least for a little while as a trial, take that money, put it in the budget buffer. And number five quick tip, and this one can actually go a long way, is assert yourself as the head of the household. Take it as an honor to be able to make these decisions and do it for the best interest of your entire household. As head of the household, the person that is in charge of making this house run smoothly, you've got to know when it's time to scrimp and when it's time to boost morale. If everyone is in a really bad state, that might be time where we all need to get treated to ice cream. But if there is a time that is abundant and there's so much going on and you have so much, don't spend where you don't need to spend. Be very mindful, be very intentional. Assert your authority as the head of your household, taking care of everyone in it and what they need, but also not overindulging where it's unnecessary. Now is your turn. Do you have a budget buffer? And if not, are you gonna think about getting one started? Let me know your thoughts on the budget buffer strategy. In my mind, it has been very helpful it has been a tool, just like the budget is a tool. The budget buffer is definitely a tool that's helped keep me on track. And I'm so glad to share it with you today and discuss it a little bit more. If you want more on the budget buffer, I will leave a video right here. This is when I initially talked about it. Check it out and I will see you in the next video. Oh, hey, if you're not subscribed yet, please hit subscribe, hit the bell so you're notified each time I upload. And smash that like button if you like this for the YouTube algorithm. Hi, K-Squad. And for all of you asking, he's doing great. Thank you for asking. I appreciate you guys. See you next week. Bye.